we have myths to bust pinned is a link to a straw poll where you can rank the myths to test a lot of things are already ranked so i'm gonna go from the top and we're going to work our way down and get through as many as we want this may reshuffle that's all right we'll just go from the highest that we haven't already looked at so myth buses let's do this the first myth that we're going to test is you can get prismatic slimes in the secret woods okay so as much as we can i want to test this in game so we're going to start up a farm we're going to be using mods to get into states that we need to i can even edit the source code and start the game with the edited source code but as much as we can i'm going to do this in game as needed i'm going to bring up the code and look at the code explore the code have it so you guys can see the code as much as you can i want to prove this within the game some of these it's we're not going to be able to help it we're going to have to prove it all within the code so you can get prismatic slimes in the secret woods is the myth so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start up a farm we're going to make it meat farm name myth the farm favorite thing prismatic slim boom and we have gordon cool now prismatic slimes uh, slimes that show up as multicolors. They're one color and then they cycle through different colors. Rainbow slimes. And if you kill it, you get prismatic jelly. You give the prismatic jelly to the wizard. He gives you the recipe for monster musk. Prismatic slimes only have a chance of spawning when a special request is active. So we need to get that special request active. So what we're going to do, I have a map predictor here which can tell you various things about the game i've uploaded this farm in here already and we have a seed if we come here to special orders special orders only start in fall and we want to find a week that has the prismatic jelly there we go eighth of fall so we are going to skip to the seventh of fall sleep a day and then the board quest will refresh and we'll be able to choose prismatic jelly now we're on fall eight so now if we go zooming into town man is going to ask us to adopt gordon what do we think chat do we do we adopt gordon i'm not on a clock here we are adopting gordon i love it how it actually looks like gordon so we're going to zoom into town we're going to have this cutscene. We're going to zoom down to the board. As shown in the predictor, we have prismatic jelly. So we are going to accept the prismatic jelly quest. I require assistance in tracking down the rare and dangerous prismatic slime within the local caves. Bring me a jar of its prismatic jelly and you'll be duly rewarded. M. Resmodius. So that's the text to track down the prismatic slime. Now, the secret woods has slimes. The mines have slimes the secret woods has slimes the volcano dungeon has slimes can you get the prismatic slime in the secret woods prismatic slime is rare having more daily luck does help with getting a slime to convert to the prismatic slime so with max daily luck what we're going to do is we are going to spend this week going to the secret woods seeing if a prismatic slime will spawn so we have slimes are any of these slimes prismatic from this first visit none of these slimes are changing color so we're going to do this for a week and then we're going to go into the code and see what the code says and then we're going to make to see what we need to do to make one of these slimes to be prismatic so day one no we'll do this all the way until sunday one of the annoying things about the secret woods is that hey, there's a bird in there ow one of the annoying things about the secret woods is that if you leave and come back the slimes aren't regenerated so it doesn't look like we have a prismatic slime today so for example there's there's a slime there and we know that there's a, we just saw a slime up there if we leave and come back in these slimes do not change they do not respawn so we cannot just keep leaving and re-entering leaving and re-entering to see if one of these will be a prismatic slime we have to sleep a day sleeping day will respawn them so we'll just keep on going to the secret woods now the slimes are different there's no slime up there we had a slime of course in there before the slimes have respawned sleeping a day has respawned the slimes there is no yeah there's a little guy in there another day another no rainbow slime sleep again back to the secret woods different batch of slimes this time hardly any this time oh wait one jumped at me there's one hidden somewhere where have we gone is there one is there one in here I believe it's possible I don't have my no clip mod on. I believe it is possible. Is there a slime in here? 
right now I'm in here. I'll, I'll show you where I am with a uh, light ring. No, anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Even if you can get a prisoner next time in the secret woods, it seems like it would be a huge pain to do any kind of run. Correct. <laughs> if you just happen to get one in here, it would be cool, but you only have the original role to have a chance of getting one from here. Again, it looks like that there is no prismatic slime in here. We have two more days to check that. No, 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 no. So we can do this for one more day because there's two more days left on the quest. Sleep. Nope. 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 Okay. It's not a huge sample size, it's not a significant sample size, but sleeping for a week and checking the secrets each day has not revealed a prismatic slime. So what do you need to do to get a prismatic slime? Let's go to the code. Here is the code of the game. Now, mine chart. This is the mines of the game. This is the location, over here locations. Mine shaft is the location of the mines. See here, jungle area, frost area, lava area. Desert area, quarry, quarry, quarry mine shaft, number of levels per area, barrels, chests, coal carts. All this here is to do with the mines. If I search for prismatic, we have a chance for prismatic shard. We have this here, spawned prismatic jelly. So this is populate level. This is when the level is being populated so up here we've just had spray for containers these are the crates and barrels that spawn around the side if you're in a dino area then it's a cosmetic plant instead spawned prismatic jelly so it's doing something that's going through every single tile on the map and if we come down here so rainbow lights this here is putting it down red and purple mushrooms choose stone type down here monster charts if the monster charts hits Spawn prismatic jelly, get monster for this level. If it's a green slime, and there is some checks in here around luck, so a base 1.2% chance, plus daily luck, are over 10, so that's another 1%. No luck level, just daily luck, and the special order is active. Then there is this make prismatic call here. So this method here, make prismatic. This method sets prismatic to true, Sets the name to Prismatic Slime, gives it a lot of health, makes it do damage to the farmer, and resets if it has a special item. This is the slimes that have the star on the head. So this is what causes a slime to become Prismatic. If we do references to this Prismatic Valley down here, uh, that one there adds it to Netfields is multiplayer stuff. That one there sets it to True. Draw, this is what causes the slime to cycle through the colors get extra drop items this is what gives you the prismatic jelly when it's killed uh populate level this prevents multiple prismatic slime showing on the same level if the monster you're adding is prismatic make sure that nothing else is prismatic and that's that's the use there so those are the only uses of prismatic value so this method here make prismatic is the only thing that sets a slime to be prismatic this method is only called in here it's only called in populate level this is the only time that a slime will be converted to be prismatic this is in the mines code so what does a secret woods code do around slimes woods added slimes today so this ensures that slimes are only added once uh where is that used and how is that used day update Reset, okay, where is that set to true? Here. Reset shared state. This is called when you first enter a area. So if you haven't added slimes today, then add them. Create a seeded random. Try 50 times to add green slimes. We saw before that mineshaft, this is, there's this make prismatic method. Only called in mineshaft, not called in the secret woods. From looking at the code, we can see that you cannot get a prismatic slime in the secret woods. What do we need to do to do it? Well, let's add on a call, make prismatic. Right, we need to do a little bit of tomfoolery here. Okay, restarting the game. So now we're running on a new code. So now if we go to the secret woods, what we expect to see is every single slime being prismatic. 
Boom. That is the code change we had to do to get every slime to be prismatic. Let's kill them all. Ah! So the myth of you can get prismatic slimes in the secret woods is busted. Okay, what do we test? What is next on the list? Monster Musk doesn't work in volcano mines. Okay, this one we should be able to test without needing to go to the code. Can you prismatify the tiger slimes? Okay, yeah, so before we move on, let's have a look at the, at the tiger slimes. There was a method on slime that I saw. Make tiger slime. I note that there is no tiger value like there was for prismatic value. Well, the easy thing we're going to do is at the end here, we're just going to call make prismatic. Now, every single tiger slime is also going to be prismatic. Actually, instead of, instead of calling make prismatic, let's actually set this prismatic value equals true. So tiger slimes will also have this prismatic value equals true. Will the slimes be stripy multicolors? Let's find out. The easiest place to look at is going to be the ginger island island farm. So how do these tiger slimes look? Are they are they striped prismatic? <laughs> oh look at that! That is cute! Some have the little stars and some don't. Alright, cool. Now what we're looking at, Monster Musk and the Volcano Dungeons. I'm going to keep the tiger slimes as being prismatic for this. So here we are in the Volcano Mines. The first thing that I want to prove is that the monsters that you see are seeded. Take careful note of where all the monsters are on the floors. So two slimes here, so we get this layout, we get two slimes there, we get a number of sprites. So we don't have to fully memorize that, but so we'll run through. note even the rock spawns and the crate spawns here two guys in there so that is the volcano dungeon on this day now i'm not going to reload the game just yet what we're going to do is we're going to go to sleep and then we are going to set the day back to the 14th so this is without reloading to file so we're now back on the 14th and again we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to go back up to the forge and then we're going to have a look in here so already this is looking familiar come to floor one we get this layout we get two monsters there funnily enough we didn't have that monster there before but yeah those two were the same those are all the same this look familiar this layout Monsters like this, monsters up there, layouts are the same, monsters for the most part are the same. Layouts are the same. So we can see that for the most part everything in here is seeded. Everything in here has the same look as it did the first time we went through. So, what happens if we do what we did before again? We go to sleep, we reset the day back to the 14th, and this time we have some monster musk, and we use that. So now we're going through the mines with monster musk on. This here looks the same. There are a lot more sprites there. Funnily enough, there's only one slime there. That looks like a lot more sprites, doesn't it? Same layout. More sprites. Are there any more slimes on the ground? A lot more. Oh, well, there's a lot more here. So it doesn't actually look that different. I should have only done a couple of wars. 
There's a lot to remember going through all of this. But you can see that there is definitely a lot more enemies on these floors. So I think we can say that Monster Musk's no effect in the volcano is busted. We can prove that in the code. Volcano Dungeon has buff. If an online farmer has the buff of 23 or 24, has spawned monsters buff. Has spawned monsters buff, monster chance is doubled. There you go. It did seem like the same number of slimes, but definitely a lot more sprites. This monster chance here, if you find references of that monster chance, that's what we wanted. And it's used here to generate things. Duggies, rock crabs, bats. No slimes. The dust sprites is a bat. It uses the same code as a bat. It's just shown as a magma sprite or a magma sparker. Duggies get doubled, rock crabs get doubled. So are the false mag magma caps, if that's the mushroom level. Bats get doubled. That is why we didn't see any more slimes. Okay, do we change it from busted to plausible? No, it's still busted. It does have an effect. It has an effect. Doesn't affect slimes, does affect duggies, rock crabs, and the magma sprites and sparkers, which chances are you're going to want a lot more of the magma sprites and sparkers because of the monster eradication quest. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Ooh, knife five has been cooking. Sorry, excuse me, Joe, this is more important. Mm. Want a cookie? Tough. What is our next myth? Monsters drop void ghost pendants. Firstly, what is a Void Ghost Pendant? A Void Ghost Pendant is this thing here. It's symbolic to the Shadow People. As a gift, it signifies the desire to move in together as friends. This looks very, very familiar, very similar to the Mermaid Pendant. The Void Ghost Pendant is the way that you ask Krobus, who I haven't met yet, it's how you ask Krobus to move in with you. He's going to reject this because I don't have the house upgrade. I can't even give it to him. Let's get the house upgraded. Upgrade house, yes. So now, it's what you give Krobus to get him to move in. So now if I sleep two days, Krobus will move in. I'm not going to sleep those days because I want to keep the friendship at max, but I don't want him to move in with yet because we have the map of Monsters Drop Void Ghost Pendants. Funnily enough, you can delete the Void Ghost Pendant but you can't delete the mermaid pendant. So, what are we gonna do for this? Do we just go into the skull cabins and kill a whole heap of monsters? Let's do it. Infinite health, one hit kill. Uh, let's get this as a frying pan. Best weapon in the game. I just like the idea of swinging a frying pan at enemies. It's very tangled. So let's go to the desert and skull cabins. <laughs> Where are my monsters? You just swing at monsters. Oh, I know, I know what to do, I know what to do. We need more monsters. Not only that, but we also want to do a debug skull cabins difficulty one. Boom. I'm gonna to need to get crusade on this thing, aren't I? So let's do this for a few minutes. And then we'll see if a void ghost pendant drops. Let me know if a void ghost pendant drops, we might be here a while. Do we want Crusader on it? Yeah, I think we want Crusader on it. Let's go to the forge. Go shard, it gives us both the prismatic and the cinder shard. Crusader. We have a frying pan with Crusader on it. Oh yes. This is what we want. One of the most fun I ever have in this game is infested monster floor hard mode with monster musk. Okay, nothing yet. How long do we go before we go into the code? Let's do three more of these floor infested floor twos and then we will have a look. Okay, this is a small one, this is a cow. I love Danger Skull Caverns with monster musk. It's one of my favourite days to play on the Seeded Perfection route. We do it to kill slimes and serpents for the monster eradication. Okay, we'll do two more. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. Look, 
we just proved it. Monsters can drop the Void Ghost Pendant. This is confirmed. Monsters drop Void Ghost Pendants. Let's see how this works. So we can see that the ID for Void Ghost Pendant is 808. So we come into Mineshaft to do a search for 808. And we see here, Monster Drop. This is the thing that causes ladders to spawn. I don't believe that this is affected by a burglar's ring. But Monster Drop, if you are in the Skull Caverns and your friendship with Krobus is 10 hearts or above and you have upgraded your house and you're not currently married or engaged and the roll is 0.1%. If all of those is true, then it will drop you a Void Ghost Pendant. So monsters in the Skull Caverns, if you fulfill the criteria for giving the Ghost Pendant to Krobus, you can get that to drop in the Skull Caverns. Interesting to note, in that code, there is nothing about saying if you already have a Void Ghost Pendant anywhere. You can get multiple Void Ghost Pendants from monsters. I believe that the Desert Trader checks to see if you already have one, but the dropping from monsters does not have it. Anyway, what's our next map? You don't need to pick up eggs until the coop is full. Okay, this is going to be a cool one. This one is going to be easy to test. It's just going to take a little bit to set up. We're going to construct a farm building, we're going to build a coop, and we're going to put it somewhere. Hey, there's room. Ah, oh, go away Demetrius. Go away Emily. All right, we're free. If you have console commands on and Smappy, you can go debug clear farm. Boom, farm's been cleared of most things. So, we now have a coop. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna fill this coop up. We're going to wait for these two chickens to grow up, and then we're gonna check in on them every day and count how many eggs are on the floor. Because if you can wait until the egg is full to pick them up, then every single day, four eggs should be added. They take a week to grow, so we sleep a week. So in we come, fully, growing and we only have I oh know that was hidden down there we've got one two three four eggs so now we're going to go to sleep and there should be another four eggs tomorrow one two three four five six so already we have lost two eggs these are all happy they've all been fed already we can tell that this myth is busted you don't need to pick up eggs until the coop is full. Well, we just lost two eggs. We go to sleep again, and we come back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we got four eggs that time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, we got four that time. So was that an anomaly? One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You're not sitting on the egg, are you? Nope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We lost an egg. So, yes, let's have a look at the code. This one's going to be interesting because I haven't actually looked at the code for this one before. Not this in depth. So, we have a farm animal class here. Farm animals... On the day update, we'll check to see if they should drop anything. So there's a check here that drops their happiness in half if they've been left outside. If they haven't been pet, friendship goes down, happiness goes down. That's where they eat. Okay, cool. Down here. It's a seeded one as well, based on the ID of the animal. Which produce? Produce today. Day since last. Lay. Days to lay. Blah, 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 blah. Hens produce every day which produce this determines what is to be dropped and if we come down here new object which produce if we're spawning an object and there's no object on the current tile location of the animal then place it if the animal is currently on a tile that contains an object this doesn't happen doesn't get placed pick up your eggs people all right what's next max cast gives better fish this one is hard to test in game but it is worth testing what is a max cast is as far as you can fling the bobber max cast when you do a cast is all the way to the end okay let's do this again for the video when you get a cast is all the way to the end 
when you get a cast that is all the way to the end, you get that little max. See it? All the way to the end, max. First try. That is a max cast. The myth is that getting that max cast, that it gives you better fish. So how do we define better fish? Do we reshape this myth? So currently it's max cast gives better fish. Let's change this to max cast gives a bonus. Because this could be framed as you get better fish, maybe you get better quality. It could be framed as that if you get a treasure chest from a max cast, then it gives you better treasure. So max cast gives a bonus. This one is gonna is hard to quantify because it's gonna be hard to or well it's hard to test because it's gonna be hard to give a sample size that gives any sort of meaning. Have to do 10,000 casts without max and 10,000 casts with max. So for this, we are going to go straight to the code. Bye Gordon. We are going to go to the fishing rod. So this is under tools, fishing rod, uh, Bob, Bob, no, casting power. That looks, that looks good. Casting power. Where is casting power set? Begin using casting power equals zero. Okay. Pick update distance casting power facing direction animations update charge sounds okay this is looking good can we just false charge sounds with we need the thing for where you let go is casting play sound cast jitter strength sine wave casting power okay casting time of speed okay cool cool start casting released what's in here start casting event file there's a lot of checks for what the state of the fishing rod is in here makes it hard to find charge sound play okay new approach in the game files there is a really cool image sheet called curses and on curses is just a whole bunch of stuff thrown on a sheet you get the star drop animation you've got numbers you've got level up text you've got this kind of background you've got buttons you've got the different curses do we see the hourglass you've got birds flying you've got the weather so the those there shop in that box up there you've got living off the land and queen of source you've got the the luck shows you've got a clock you've got the health bars somewhere in here under complete journey of the prairie king all the monsters for journey of the prairie king there max it the Baba Bar mini game. This is the location of this is about 545 1921. 545 1921. So whenever something is pulled off the sheet, it references that file and then it has a reference of where it wants to pull that image from. So this one here, 395 497. 395 497. Let's grab that. What we just saw there pulls out that. The exclamation mark 545 1921 that is a very familiar number this bit of code here is what puts the max above your head so this here is the criteria for getting it if the casting power is greater than 0.99 so if your casting power is one and you're the farmer that's currently on screen then get that max display it blah 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 delayed action play sound after delay the crit sound wait 200 milliseconds and play it this bit here is what shows the max there is nothing in here that is setting anything saying that you got the max there's no flag that's set there's no boolean property that's set so there's nothing there we can look at so we just need to keep looking at casting power what else does casting power do is casting power looked at later to look at what kind of fish gets on the line what kind of treasures you get on the line so looking down here draw that's just getting things onto the screen begin using that reset it to zero tick update distance casting power is directly related to how far the bobber goes yes that makes sense cool that doesn't mean that you need to get the max we're looking for another use of casting power that makes sure it checks for 0.99 or above or above 0.99 uh tick update distance yes get added distance get added distance what does that do ah cool you're fishing level there's cutoffs on your fishing level to make it go further 
So you get to fishing level 4, then it can go further. Fishing level 1 goes further, fishing level 4 goes further. That's cool. Uh, casting power, it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. So you've got to have exactly 1 in order, to, in order for you to get that. Uh, lots of casting power in there. Set variable, pitch. So that's the ooh. If casting power is max or min, then swap around which way it goes. If casting power is... Yeah, so casting power is exactly one. That's the kind of thing we're looking at before, but this is just around during the casting itself. Do start casting. This is the one we looked at before. There is no... There's nothing else in here that has any effect anywhere else around you getting the max. So, the myth of does a max cast give a bonus? The answer to that, confirmed, because it gives you a nice little ching. Yes, the bonus you get is a, a little burst of satisfaction that you got a max cast. It is not looked at for the kind of fish that you get. It's not looked at for the treasure that you get. We can prove that in game location, get fish. This is the code that tells you what fish you've got on the line. It looks at the location that you're fishing at. It looks at the season that you're fishing at. It looks at the time of day. It looks at if you're using magic bait. It looks at if you're using the beginner's rod. It looks at your fishing level. It does not look at the casting strength. We can see in here in all the references to casting power, there is no reference in get fish. And get fish is what tells you what fish you have hooked. Max cast gives you a bonus. Confirmed. It makes you feel better about yourself. What is next? Wickedy chickadee, are you here? This is one that she gets a lot of comments on her videos. Myth is, you can get a prismatic shard from the trash. I think it got a mention in the like all about prismatic shards video thinking that she mentioned that you might be able to but she wasn't sure but she's had a lot of people tell her that they've gotten a the prismatic shard from the trash so trash when you talk about trash we talk about these trash cans every day you can give one a shake and there's a chance for an item to come out most of the time the item is going to be crap most of the time it's going to be nothing the second highest thing it can be is actual trash joja cola yay Green algae, yay! Occasionally, someone will throw out pine cone, yay! Will throw out something that's actually useful. But having someone throw out something that's actually useful is very rare. So how are we going to test this? Do we sleep and just keep checking trash? Do we spend years in game, years checking trash till we get a prismatic shard? That doesn't sound fun. So we can look at the code for this one. The code for trash cans come from locations town and this is in a method called check action i know this code well because garbage cans have factored into a number of searches that i've done garbage checked which can so this tells us we're in the right place this is a number which can is a number to look at what this is we're going to come to this program called tiled and tiled is a way that you can look at the map data of the game so i'm going to open up town here is town and you can see that each trash can has tile data on it so all the doors all the trash cans that mailbox the board it's got tile data okay here's a trash garbage space three this trash can is garbage three it's a garbage can with index of three so that's what this which can is so if you click on the museum trash then which can becomes three and then that there's a check in there to see if you have checked that particular garbage if you have ignore it if you haven't then go through all this create a random so this controls what the drop is this is seeded to the seed to the day into which can you are looking at so this is how we are able to incorporate this into seeded runs if you have checked 21 or more trash cans then things change there's extra chances of getting things out of the cans and what would drop changes as well uh, this here is if the can jumps up we are not really interested in that coming down here uh, this code here is about having people be disgusted at you for looking at the trash can you lose 25 points for anyone except for linus who you gain five friendship points with that gives you the garbage can hat 
if mega which was the chance up further up or 20 percent plus daily luck so if your daily luck is negative then you have less chance of getting trash if it's positive then you have more so up to about 30 percent of getting something anything out of the trash this here splits the code down 10 paths most of these paths is just an item so you if you get trash there is a 1 out of 10 chance that it is a 168 168 is trash then there's 167 which is Joja Cola 170 which is broken glasses 171 broken CD 172 soggy newspaper so this is how trash cans mainly hold trash uh, 216 is bread so bread can drop from every trash can this one here get random item from season this is a big one we'll come back to that later okay 7403 403 is field snack every trash can has the possibility of dropping a field snack 8309 plus another use of the random so this one is either acorn maple seed or pine cone 153 is green algae if which can is three which is the one that we looked at first if it's the museum trash so this is after all this stuff here so this here can override if it's the museum trash 535 is a geode and then there's a five percent chance after that for it to be 749 which is an omni geode so you can get geodes or omni geodes dropping from the museum if which can is four which can four is clint's then it can be 378 plus something. So 378 copper ore can be 380, iron ore can be 382 coal. And so you can get ore from Clint's. Geodes from the museum or from Clint's. If which is five, uh, dish of the day, so that's gotta be Gus. Yep, five is Gus, it's the saloon. Then it can drop you the dish of the day. Uh, which can equal six? And item 223. Garbage 6 is George and Evelyn's place. Item is 223. Take a guess at what that is. Did you guess cookie? Which can is 7 is the Joe Jamart trash can. Which can equals 7. 167 or 270 or 809. So has any player seen event 191393? 167. Joe Jacola. So if you haven't seen that event will be Joja Cola. Otherwise, it'll be 270, which is corn, or 809, which is a movie ticket. So if that Joja Mart is converted to the movie theater, then corn or movie ticket. And also overriding it is this check here for 890, which is gonna be a Queen Bean. So that is all of the items that you can get, except for looking in here. So none of these is for a prismatic shard. Of everything we've looked at here so far, we've looked at all the IDs that can drop, none of those is for a prismatic shard. So if a prismatic shard is going to drop, it has to be in here. Get random item from season. This method here looks at the, uh, passes in what the season is, passing the tile location of the trash can itself, and saying that this is not for a quest. Get random item from season. Let's go to that. All of that stuff in there goes into a random, it's seeded again. Possible items. This is an interesting looking count here. What are all these? Uh, 68. Topaz. Possible items. Topaz. Amethyst. Cave Carrot. Quartz. Earth Crystal. 152. Seaweed. 167. Joja Cola. Here there's Joja Cola again. 153. Green Algae. 420. Red Mushroom. So these are possible items you can get from the trash can for random item from season. But there's more. Looking down here, you can add stuff to possible items. If you have reached floor 41 in the mines or you've reached the bottom then add on aquamarine add on jade add on diamond add on frozen tear add on purple mushroom okay so things are getting added surely one of these is going to be for a prismatic chart okay so if you reach floor 81 add on 64 ruby add on 60 emerald add on 82 fire quartz no prezi yet. If you have opened the vault, then 88, coconut, 90, cactus fruit, 164, sandfish, scorpion cup. If you have the furnace recipe, it gives you copper bars, iron bars, gold bars, refined quartz. No reading bars from there. If you have the recipe for a quartz globe, then it adds on 339, which doesn't exist. Item 339 doesn't exist. Quartz globe also doesn't exist, but it's still here in the code. If the season is spring, add on wild horseradish, 
daffodil, leek, dandelion, add on anchovy, sardine, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, carp, catfish, sunfish, herring, eel, seaweed, again, joja cola, again, 267, flounder. In spring those items get added. Still no prismatic shard. What about summer? Summer is 128. Pufferfish. Tuna. Bream. Largemouth bass again. Rainbow trout. Prismatic shard is kind of a rainbow, isn't it? Cut. Pike. Sunfish. Red mullet. Octopus. Red snapper. Super cucumber. Spice berry. Grape. Sweet pea. 267. That's the one there that was flounder again. Ball. Or a four. Common mushroom. Wild plum. Hazelnut. 14 blackberry, anchovy, 131, sardine, bream, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, salmon, walleye, carp, catfish, eel, red snapper, sea cucumber, super cucumber, midnight carp, winter, winter root, crystal fruit, snow yam, crocus, tuna, sardine, bream, largemouth bass, walleye, perch, pike, red mullet, Herring, red snapper, squid, sea cucumber, midnight carp. If this is for a quest, which we saw is not for a quest, so this is not for trash, but if it was for a quest, the intent in here is to look at all the cooking recipes and see if all the ingredients are available and to add that to the possible items. However, there is a bug in the code here. That then needs to be plus two, because it's looking at a wrong number in there. So this advances the RNG, but never actually adds anything here into the possible items. And then, from all that list that we've looked it up here, including diamonds, rubies, emeralds, gold bars, the entire list, it chooses an item from that list. Nowhere in here was there the ID for the prismatic shard. 74 is the ID for a prismatic shard. There is no 74 in this method. The result of this method can never be 74. That can never be 74. Can never be a prismatic shard. So item, none of these are 74. None of these are 74. There's 749, that's an omnigeode. None of those are 74. Dish of the day is not 74. None of this is 74. And down here, this is where it adds it from, to the trash with the item that we had there. From looking at the code here, you cannot get a prismatic shard from the trash. No matter how deep in the mines you've got, no matter what recipes you have, you will not get a prismatic shard out of the trash on the vanilla game client. There may be a mod out there that adds it. It may be a common mod, maybe Stardew Valley Expanded. That may be possible. On the vanilla game, you will not get a prismatic shard from the trash. Busted. All right, what's next? Fish don't like the taste of magnets. Okay, this is the next one. Fish don't like the taste of magnets. The reason for this myth is the game itself. Let's get ourselves a magnet. So not a magnet ring, but a, a magnet. This is bait that goes on a fishing rod that gets consumed when you go fishing. And the text of the magnet is, increases the chance of finding treasures when fishing. However, fish aren't crazy about the taste. The game is saying that fish aren't crazy about the taste of magnets. So. According to that, it looks like that when you go fishing with the magnet, you are less likely to get fish hooked on the line. This one could be... Yeah, let, let, let's go fishing for a bit. We need a... Let's go Iridium Rod. Let's get a stack of magnets. Let's get a stack of regular bait. Let's go for a dressed spinner. Let's do... It's going to be a small number, so it's not going to be decisive, but let's do 20 casts of each. And we'll see how many of the casts are fish and how many of the casts are trash so we'll come over here the dress spinner reduces the time for fish to bite yeah so looking at the text fish aren't crazy about the taste so i interpret that as that you get a bite magnet decreases the chance that that bite is a fish and increases the chance that that is trash worth noting that seaweed is not trash seaweed is in the list of fish Trash, like trash, soggy newspaper, uh, broken glasses, broken CD, all those, Joja Cola, those aren't in the list of fish, where seaweed is in the list of fish. You always interpret it as taking longer to get a bite. Okay, so 
couple of interpretations we can have there. Takes longer to bite or less likely to be fish. So we we need a timer. We can do both at the same time. So we'll do 20 casts. I'll start the timer when the bob hits the water. I'll stop it when I get the ring. Okay, so first one is a fish. Okay, we have two fish. All fish so far. There's three, four, five. Oh, that was fast. Six, seven, eight. Let's go to ten. Nine, ten. Ten out of ten for fish. Forty-eight seconds. Yeah, let's write that down. Because what's the difference between science and messing around? Whether you write it down. Cool. Let's reset the time and let's swap over to eight. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Still a fish. Six. One of them is trash. Seven. Eight. Another trash. Nine. Ten. So it's not decisive by any means, but ten magnets took 49 seconds and got me ten fish. Bait took three seconds longer. Three and a half seconds longer. So magnets actually hooked more fish in a shorter time. But it's not definitive by any means, it was only a sample size of 10. Let's have a look at the code. So this is back in game location, get fish, as we would look before. Get fish, determine what fish is on the line. This here is an interesting line. A favourite bait boolean. Using magic bait as if you're using magic bait, yep. Favourite bait. You get location data from data slash locations. If you're in the beach night market, then you use beach. If you're in the witch's swamp and the henchman is not yet gone, then you have a 25% chance of just getting a void mayonnaise. If the location data has a key of where you are fishing. So let's take a look at location data. This here is location data. Um, underground mine, desert, bus stop, forest, town, mountains, backwards, railroad, beach, all of the common places that you're fishing. So if location data contains where you are fishing then take a look at the data of where you are fishing or plus get season number so looking here these ones here relate to ids of forage forage in spring forage in summer forage in fall forage in winter from here these are fish ids so this tells you what fish are in the fishing pool and it's by id so that's what this raw fish data is. What fish are available in the fish pool? If you're using magic baits, then add on everything else. Raw fish data with location. That also includes a location, either negative one or zero. So negative one if it's everywhere, zero and one based on whether it's the forest, river or the pond. I haven't seen bait yet. Time spans. So then it looks in data slash fish data slash fish contains the fish id the name the difficulty the what kind of fish it is uh the i think that one there is an optimal depth you've got time you've got season you've got weather you've got these things here 690.4 685.1 682.2 we'll have a look look at what these here are later and then you've got some other these look like probability numbers so you get your fish data out so specific fish data so this looks at what time you can fish it up there's weather magic bait doesn't care difficulty this here is where the beginner's rod overrides there is your difficulty cut off for the beginner's rod chance that's one of the numbers that we saw in the specific fish data drop off amount another number we saw in the in the list beginner's rod has a higher chance of actually hooking the fish that you can possibly get uh, this here is the curiosity law get bob attachment index that there's curiosity law and there's that code there that math to adjust the chance nothing here about bait yet was trash look at the other uh, trash is festival if it's not a festival and there's a chance to be overridden by beans secret notes a uh, chance to be overridden uh, trash can be overridden by secret notes 
and favorite bait favorite bait down here it's declared it's always going to be false nothing in there but there was bobbers nothing in there about bait other than magic bait so we're looking in the wrong place do function okay so there is the call to get fish to see what fish you're going to get begin using okay this looks better again there's favorite bait do done fishing that consumes the bait this is what i'm looking at calculate time until fishing bite we've seen that there's a favorite bait that's not used for getting the fish we haven't seen anything about bait other than magic bait for the type of fish that you get so now let's look to see the time until the fishing bites this here is checking to see if it is a fish pond we don't care about fish ponds we can just close that down time Take a random number between the mini, the minimum fishing bite time, the maximum fishing bite time. These are set, if we pick definition, we can see that these are set at the top of the method. 0.6 seconds and 30 seconds. Max bite time, take away 250 milliseconds, 0.25 seconds per fishing level. Attachments one, this is the bobber. So if the bobber is the spinner, 5,000. If the bobber is the dress spinner, 10,000. 5 seconds, 10 seconds. Spinner takes off 5 seconds, dress spinner takes off 10 seconds. Fishing level takes off uh, 0.25 seconds per fishing level. So that reduces the max fishing bite time, which has a tighter range for getting the time. If it is your first cast, so this one is if you have just cast it and it's sitting in the water, if it's the first time that you're waiting for a fish, then is first cast is true. If it rings and you don't click, then is first cast is false. So if you miss a ring, the subsequent rings will be slower. The first cast reduces it by 25%. Then if base.attachment0, this is the bait slot. If the bait slot has something in it, cut the time in half. If the bait slot is 774, wild bait. If the bait slot is wild bait, then cut the time by another 25%. So a range between min and max. Max is affected by level and the bobber. If it's the first cast, cut by 25%. If any bait is attached, cut it in half. And then if that bait is wild bait, cut it by another 25%. There is no distinction here between bait and magnets. If anything is in the bait slot, then the time is cut. There isn't actually any check anywhere that it is baked in the slot. This here is the main one there. If anything is in the slot, cut it in half. So, magnets and bait are treated the same. What about this favourite bait? There's a few references to that. In here, there was paved bait. Fishing rod, if it's using the favourite bait, the fish size is bigger. If o.scale.x is 1, the fave bait is true. That looks very similar to that there. If it's using the favorite bait, then set the scale to x to 1. I don't know this for certain, but my assumption is that this is a feature that got cut from the game. Having a look at fish, there were these numbers here 690, 685. So 690 is Warp Totem Beach, 685 is bait. Uh, what else is there? 682. 682 is Mutant Cup. 689, 681. My assumption is that this here was supposed to be favourite bait. And that that number there was supposed to add to the chance of getting that fish if you had that bait on. That this was developed early on in the cycle of the game. It was cut and then the item IDs reused for something else, which is why you have the warp totems in there. And my assumption was, my assumption is, that magnets had a effect on the chances in here, and that if you're using magnets, it would reduce the chance of getting any kind of fish. And that the text on the magnet, however fish aren't crazy about the taste, that that text is just a hangover from when fishing was being developed and that included favorite bait because we can see indications that favorite bait was a thing in the code we have this text fish aren't crazy about the taste and we have this here which isn't used in the code anywhere it does contain bait and it also contains things like mutant carp 
and warp totems, things that were added later in the development cycle. All the new fish just have 685 set. So from the myth of fish don't like the taste of magnets, that myth is busted. So magnets do help you get treasure chests but they don't. Let's do another one. Data like affects monster spawns, geo drops, crop spawns, animal drops, wood drops. Now there's a lot in here and I'm not going to have the time to definitively test every aspect of this. I'm going to have to have this one as just a big look at the code. Monster spawns. So the myth for monster spawns is that low daily luck equals more monsters. The relevant class here is mineshaft. So this is the mines. We want to go to populate level. Populate level is what puts things on the map. This is what puts stones, monsters, quartz, earth crystals, frozen tears, mushrooms. This is what puts everything on the map. And you see here, there is a monster chance. Stone chance, monster chance, item chance. So to begin with, base of 0.2%, then take a random number between 0 and 109, divide it by 10,000, add it to that. So monster chance to begin with is a range. And this ends up being a low number. This is because every single tile is evaluated to see should a monster be there, should a stone be there. So we're looking at monster chance. Adjust level chances. If the mine level is 1, then monster chance is just 0. Item chance is 0. Gemstone chance is 0. If it is an elevator floor in the regular mines, so if the last number is 5 or 0, then item chance is 0. Gem chance is 0. If it is a... The chest floor, then no monsters. If you must kill all monsters to advance, if you're a slime floor, if you're a monster floor, if you're a dino floor, monster chance is set to a flat 2.5%. Item chance is set to a flat 0.1%. Dino area, item chance increases by 4. Monster chance is 2% per point of additional difficulty. If you're in the dangerous mines, additional difficulty is 1. No check of daily luck anywhere in here so far. Buff has spawned monsters buff. Uh, 23 is oil of garlic, 24 is monster musk. So 23 if you have the garlic and the mine area and you're not in the skull caverns and you don't have the spawn monsters buff, monster chance is zero. No monsters at all if you use oil of garlic. If you have monster musk, monster chance is doubled. Gem chance is just halved. If you're in the quarry, then everything adjusts. What's the chance of set to put two? If you have additional difficulty and you're in the forest levels, what's the chance is reduced? Must be because most of the monsters are spawn in groups. Nothing about daily luck in here so far. So how is what's the chance used? We'll go down until we see it highlighted. Spawn prismatic jelly. Spawn object here. Yeah. What's the chance? It's just straight use mine.random next double monster chance. Nothing about daily luck in here. If you get in here, you're spawning a monster. Get monster for this level, mine level. This here looks at what kind of monster you're going to get. Does daily luck change what kind of monster you get? Let's have a look. No additional difficulty. No daily luck there. Big slime, green slime. Green slime, mine levels, mine levels. Distance from the ladder. Uh, don't arrow, random, random. Must kill almost to advance. Uh, Dougie, Rock Crab. Dougie, Rock Crab. Still nothing about daily luck. Still nothing about luck level either. Ghosts. Different mines, areas. Additional difficulty. Mine random. Ghost added. Only one ghost from floor 50. Uh, rock Crab makes stick bug. Leaper. Spiders are called leapers. Grub, green slime. Bat, green slime. Still nothing in here about daily luck carving ghost doesn't have that single ghost chick in there serpent royal serpent dino monster bug no reference to daily luck in get monster for this level at all here is a reference to daily luck that is about seeing if you get a prismatic so daily luck affects your chances of getting a prismatic slime Leaper, 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 Leaper. So this is monsters spawning in groups. If monster is a Leaper. If it's a Grub, spawn in groups. No daily luck. Check in there. Dust Spirit. In the code, Dust Sprites are called Dust Spirits. 
No diva luck for those. If a monster is, has a special item or is a boss slime. So any monster can have a special item. It's only the slimes that have the different sprite. And this is just another check to make sure that you don't have multiple prismatics and then you add it. The only reference to daily luck around monsters spawning is around if a already spawned green slime will become prismatic. That's the only thing that daily luck affects regarding monsters. So daily luck affects monster spawns other than prismatic, busted. Daily luck affects geode drops. Now this could affect, this could refer to one of two things. This could refer to getting a geode to drop from a rock or it could refer to the contents of geodes. Let's look at both of those. Let's start with uh, geodes dropping in the first place. Okay, check stone for items. This is the method that's called when you break a rock. This determines if you get copper, ore, ladders, geodes. There's this chance modifier, which looks at daily luck. Chance modifier is used for checking to see, it's not used. Uh, chance for ladder down refers to daily luck. Chance for ladder down, if no enemies exist, add 4%. Chance for ladder down is used for creating a ladder down. Break stone, this is on game location, this is different kinds of rocks, this is ore, this is gem nodes, this determines, it's muscle nodes, it's uh, bone nodes, it is, it's the grey rocks. If any, if you get any experience from that, then don't carry on. So this prevents any of this happening from uh, ore nodes from grey rocks. Tile index of stone 44, this is the purple gem node. However, tile index of stone is 44. We come back to break stone. Tile index of stone is 44. If index of stone is 44, then index of stone is a random stone from yeah, 1 to 7 times 2. So from 2 to 14. Those correspond to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 corresponds to these rocks up here so if it's a gem node then using game one at random treat it as any one of those other gem nodes and then come down here you get the gem node you get the item out of it you get experience come all the way down to here return of experience is greater than zero so because of tile index of stone 44 being in breakstone you're going to return experience you're not going to look into this bit of code here at all this is where the code used to go, but it doesn't go in here anymore. This is where gem nodes would be restricted to what other gems you'd normally get on that floor. This is where it restricts it to amethyst and topaz. Okay, 2.2% plus chance modifier. That was the thing we saw further up. And profession contains 22. That is geologist. 535 plus 0, 1 or 2. 535 is geode. 5 through 6 is frozen geode, 5 through 7 is magma geode. This here is the geode drops. Chance modifier uses daily luck. Daily luck does affect what rocks will drop geodes. More daily luck, more likely to actually get a geode out of a rock. It's a tiny chance, but it is a chance. Daily luck does affect what rocks can drop geodes. That is confirmed what drops when you crack a geode what you get out of it does daily luck affect that and utility get treasure from geode this is seeded based on the number of geodes that you have opened there's some uses of the random in here pre-warm there's some things about quee beans get the golden coconut if it's a golden coconut hat if it's a golden coconut is there anything in here that looks at daily luck so this is the um, banana saplings, the mango saplings, the tarot tubers, the pineapple seeds. This here looks at options for each geode. If we have a look at here, there's a huge number of IDs at the end. An Omni of 749 is a big list. These are the standard minerals you can get from a geode. That's where their list is. And that is just a use of the random there is no look to see how valuable the minerals are it's just pick something out of that list and there's another chance here to make it a prizzy if it's an omni geode 
So everything else in that list has an equal chance. And if you're not looking at a mineral, so 50% chance to be a mineral. If you're not looking at a mineral, then there's code down here about making it ore and which ore and there's an amount. No look at daily luck here. 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 No daily luck. No daily luck at all anywhere in this method which is called get treasure from geode. Daily luck does not affect the item that you get from cracking a geode. That is busted. Crop spawns. Crop. Harvest. This is what's called when you harvest a crop. If it's a forage crop, things are seeded. If you have botanist, everything is iridium. Other than that, it's a check for your foraging level. If it's not a forage, then try to harvest it, get a random, get your chance for gold, chance for silver. This is adjusted based on the fertilizer quality level. Uh, fertilizer quality, deluxe fertilizer. Get your crop quality. Max harvest increase. This is used for things like uh, blueberries, things that just give you free at once. Chance for extra crops. This is on the crop itself. This is 20% for potatoes. Just constantly roll 20% to get extra potatoes until it fails. So this is how I'm able to get 20 potatoes for one crop. Just a constantly use of the random while chance for extra crops hits. Then add to that number. Okay, carrying on down. Um, this here. A use of the random. The random looks at luck level, looks at daily luck, makes it a really small number. So from luck level, it's a really small number. From daily luck, it's a really small number. Add that to another really small number, but it's a chance to double your entire harvest. That is the extra crops further up. So they're rolling 20% plus this chance to double. That is what lets me get like those spots that have 20 potatoes on it that have that I've used uh, in various challenge runs and speed runs. Daily luck doesn't affect the quality of crops that you get, but it can affect the amount of crops that you get. So that one we're going to put as plausible. Uh, animal drops, farm animals, uh, produce quality. So four is iridium. Two is gold, one is silver, zero is normal. So there's this chance for quality here, which looks at friendship towards the farmer and happiness. If you have the relevant professions for where the animal is living, you get a boost. This chance for quality does not look at daily luck. It does not look at luck level, but deluxe produce index. The chance to get a deluxe product, so a duck feather or a rabbit's foot, not the so not looking at the quality the quality is still down here but it's whether you get a rabbit's foot or a duck feather so if it's a duck there's a random use similar code in here for if, if it's a rabbit friendship towards farmer friendship towards farmer happiness modifier happiness modifiers this one up here daily luck luck level daily luck and luck level do affect the chance of a rabbit dropping a rabbit's foot and a duck dropping a duck feather this code is called on day update Holding a luck ring will increase the chance of getting a rabbit's foot or a duck feather. And whatever daily luck you got will increase the chance of getting a rabbit's foot and a duck feather. At the time this code is called, any food buffs you had, if you ate a magic rock candy, if you ate a lucky lunch, if you ate a spicy eel, that is cleared. So you don't have food buffs with that, but you will have luck ring buffs with that. So daily luck affecting animal drops, we're going to stick that as a plausible. Doesn't affect quality, does affect the kind of produce that you get if it's a duck, if it's a rabbit. This here is for large products. So if it's not a duck, if it's not a rabbit, this is just a random check. No daily luck, no luck level there. And what else is there? Wood drops. Uh, that is in tree. Tree is in terrain features. This is on pick update. The amount of wood that you get is determined at the point the tree hits the ground. Let's step through this. Uh, look at the season, shake timer, that's if you shook it manually. There's a timer there to, before you can shake it again. Not falling, we don't care. Chance for a leaf rustle to happen on the way down. Uh, this is when it's hit the ground. Do the thud. Add a random amount of leaves. Remove it from the tile location list number hardwood if the last player to hit it has the lumberjack then 
add hardwood, it's a while, so a rolling 50% chance. If it's mahogany, add hardwood onto that. Drop the hardwood if you've got it there. Where's the wood? Where's the dropping of the wood? I've lost it. It's in here somewhere. This is sap, 92 is sap. Base of 12, there's this extra wood calculator. Extra wood calculator has a check for daily luck. It's seeded, seeded as to what trees will drop you extra wood. Daily luck can give you extra wood. A foraging level can give you extra wood. There's two uses of that. Your luck level can give you extra wood. I should add this to the predictor. Uh, daily luck does affect the amount of wood that you get from a tree. That is confirmed. Apologies there, my, my brain is starting to dissipate near the end of this. And these last few ones was just all looking at code. What did we have a look at? We looked at prismatic slimes in the secret woods. We busted that one. You cannot get a prismatic slime in the secret woods. They only spawn naturally in the mines. Though we did introduce some code to make them all prismatic, including tiger slimes. That was cool. Monster Musk doesn't work in the volcano mines. Busted. Monster Musk does work in the volcano mines. It doesn't increase slimes. It doesn't increase metal heads, but it does increase duggies. It does increase magma sprites and sparkers. It does increase false magma caps and mushroom levels. Uh, you don't need to pick up eggs until the coop is full. That is busted. Pick up your eggs. If you don't, you have a chance of losing the spot. I believe there is more to that, but we didn't get as deep as could have ideally. Daily luck affects monster spawns, geo drops, crop spawns, animal drops, wood drops. The only monster spawn it affects is the chance of a green slime becoming prismatic. It doesn't change the amount of monsters that you get. It does slightly change the chance of getting a geode from a rock. It doesn't change what items you get from the geode when you crack it. It daily luck doesn't affect crop quality. However, there's a very, very, very tiny chance that it can affect whether that whether your crop yield is doubled. Animal drops, it doesn't affect the quality of the animal drops. It can affect whether a rabbit will drop you a rabbit's foot or a duck will drop you a duck feather. And there is a chance that daily luck gives you an extra piece of wood when you chop down a tree. We looked at whether monsters drop void ghost pendants and we discovered that yes, that one is confirmed. Monsters in the Skull Caverns can drop you a Void Ghost Pendant if you have 10 hearts with Crobus, if you have upgraded your house and you are not currently engaged or married. Fish don't like the taste of magnets. That one is busted. The tooltip on the magnet says that fish aren't crazy about the taste, but that appears to be a holdover from early in development of the game of when fish had favorite bait a feature that has been scrapped apparently you can get a prismatic shard from the trash that is busted we look at looked at the trash code we looked at what determines what item you can drop prismatic shard was nowhere near that list and we looked at max cast gives a bonus and we said that that one was confirmed the bonus that you get is a little bit of text saying max a little chime and you feel a bit better about yourself it doesn't change what kind of fish you get doesn't change the quality doesn't change what kind of cheese you get you just get that little jingle and you feel better about yourself that is all that we looked at today that's a bit of a sizable list there is a lot more on the list there may be another stream of this that we do at some point i will keep the list we'll see how we go